The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here, a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at a table with him. Then Mary took a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put in it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Some of you may know that in a former incarnation of my career, I was a lay chaplain at St. Andrew's Episcopal School in Boca Raton, Florida. I was in charge of the spiritual leadership of the middle school, some 256th, 7th, and 8th graders. (laughs) Well, so it was that on one Lenten chapel, uh, I was looking for a speaker who could speak to the students about the meaning of Lent. And I asked a friend of mine, uh, the Reverend Steve Zimmerman. Uh, He's a priest in this diocese. Some of you may have known him before. And he came and spoke. Now, I had no idea what he would say to the group as they were assembled, all of these 10, 11, 12, 13-year-olds. And he started his talk by expressing two truths. He said, I've got two truths for you. Number one, there is a God. Number two, it's not you. Now, honestly, I can't quite remember where the talk went from there, but I certainly remember (laughs) those two lines, and I think that every student in that room also remembered those two lines. Here we are on this Sunday coming upon Psalm 23, and we're reading Psalm 23 today because in this past week, in our E100 Bible Challenge, we went through the Psalms and Proverbs. And on Monday, Whitney Cunahom chose for us Psalm 23, as one of the most famous psalms and proverbs. You know, there are various translations of this psalm that we may or may not be familiar with. And so we read it along and think, is it, yea, though I walk through the valley? Is it, uh, my cup runneth over? Or is my cup running over? I'll tell you one translation that we never come upon, uh, no matter what Bible you're looking at, NIV, NRSV, or the prayer book, we never come upon the following translation of Psalm 23. I am my own shepherd. I shall not be in want. I make myself lie down in green pastures and lead myself beside still waters. I revive my own soul and guide myself along pathways for my own namesake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for I am with myself. My rod and my staff, they comfort me. I spread a table before myself in the presence of those who trouble me. I anoint my own head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely my goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in my own house forever. We never come upon that translation because Psalm 23 makes clear, in the same way that Father Steve Zimmerman made clear, there is a shepherd, and it's not us. The Lord is my shepherd. It is the Lord who leads behind the still waters. It is the Lord who anoints my head with oil. And it is the Lord's house in which I will dwell this day and forevermore. You know, in Western culture, and especially in America, we are up against this notion of the individual. Uh, Individualism is such a powerful concept. And it goes back to, you know, the, the American West and the iconic images of of the cowboy riding into the sunset, the proverbial lone ranger, or even the uh, businessman or businesswoman who has pulled herself up by the proverbial bootstraps. 
this notion is strong in our culture of the individual, that I can do it on my own. I can be my own shepherd. And yet, here we are in Psalm 23, hearing that there is a shepherd, and it's not us, it's the Lord, challenging our very notions of individualism. Sheep, as it turns out, are interesting characters. Depending on whom you talk to, sheep are either very silly and dumb or very smart. I think the truth is somewhere in the middle. It is said that sheep uh, will wander off, and so they certainly are absent-minded. They can get caught in a thicket or even head off a cliff, and that's why the shepherd has a crook to grab them by the leg and pull them back into the fold. So they are somewhat silly animals, and yet they're very smart when it comes to hearing. Sheep can distinguish different sounds and especially different human voices. And so it is, and you may have heard this before, that when sheep are drinking water, there will be multiple sheep all mixed up at a watering hole and the shepherds standing around. And when it comes time to sort out the sheep, a shepherd simply gives a whistle or a call and starts speaking. And the sheep recognize the voice of that shepherd and they come to him or her that is their guide. And then the other shepherd will give a click or a whistle and start speaking and the sheep recognize the voice of their shepherd and come running. So it is that God is our shepherd. We hear God's voice, and we follow. This Psalm 23 is interesting because it has a common thread that ties it together at the very beginning and the very end. It's all about following. Let's take a look at it if we can. If, can we open up our, uh, our leaflets and let's take a look right at the text Psalm 23 is printed for us. We'll see if we can do some exposition here to understand the, the central theme of this psalm. Okay, at the very beginning, the Lord is my shepherd. That establishes God as shepherd. It's just like in the Ten Commandments where God says, Commandment number one, I am the Lord your God who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Then it says, he makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. So if God is leading, if the shepherd is leading, then we are following. The theme of following introduced in verse 2. And then we come along, we understand the the, uh, credentials of the shepherd, and we get to verse 6, where it says, surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Well, it turns out that something is following us as we are following God, and it is goodness and mercy. We have the choice whether or not to follow God. We have the choice whether or not to follow the shepherd or be our own shepherd. But the blessing is that if we make that choice to follow God as our shepherd, something will follow us, and it will be goodness and mercy. Another fact about sheep, it turns out that sheep cannot be driven. You can't come up from behind them and drive them like cattle. But they will be led. They will follow the one that calls their name. And we're told that if we follow the one that calls our name, goodness and mercy will follow us. How does it work? How does it work to follow God? You know, Whitney Cunaholm was here and he was talking about the ways that God speaks to us can speak to us through scripture or other people, and sometimes there are those lightning bolt moments where God speaks to us clearly. Other times, following God is more of a daily exercise, more of a daily participation in God's statutes and God's ways and daily doing the right thing. Just that kind of mundane, daily, trying to do the right thing and then watching and waiting for the goodness and mercy to follow us and catch up with us as we go. I have a personal story of something that happened right here at St. Mary's Episcopal Church. This involves myself and also our music director, Joanne Nelson. It must have been last November when I was walking over to the Pittenger Center to get something out of the closet, and there was an event going on. 
It was the Martin Memorial Auxiliary Luncheon. This is something that happens about once every month or so that volunteers at the hospital are welcomed to the Pitner Center and Martin Memorial throws a little lunch for them and St. Mary's gives them a deal on the space to do so. Well, I walked in and there was a band playing and there was a jazz band playing Christmas carols because it was November, they were getting ready for the Christmas season. Well, they were really good. There was a piano, somebody on the snare drum, somebody on the electric guitar, and they were doing these jazzed up versions of Christmas carols. They were really good. Or as they say in jazz language, these cats could play. <laughs> well, I noticed that they were all in about eighth grade. And so I asked somebody, you know, who are these young people doing such a great job on these jazzed up Christmas carols? And I was told that they were from the Pine School right down the street. Well, I got what I was getting and didn't think of it until the next day at staff meeting when it was just on my heart to be positive. And uh, one of the great things about St. Mary's staff is it's a very positive staff. And one of the ways that I've been following God is just to try to be positive in a lot of things. So I said to the staff, I, I just want to pass on a really positive thing that I was at the Pittenger Center and there was this terrific jazz band. And there were these young kids fully engrossed in the music and they were doing a great job. And I thought it was just a neat thing that it happened on our campus. And that was it. Well, Joanne turned to me and she said, you should pass on that compliment to the Pine School. You should tell them how much it meant to you. And I thought, oh, well, and she said, no, you should contact them and let them know. So I went to my computer and found the email address of the music director at the Pine School. Typed out a few line email that said, uh, dear Mr. Rab, his name was Marcus Rab, I couldn't help noticing some students from your school at our church and they did a great job. Please pass on my compliments to the director of that group. Well, a few moments later, I got an email back from Marcus Rab, and he said, that was me. I was the director. Thank you for that compliment. You probably didn't see me behind the piano, but I'm there every year, and thanks very much. Incidentally, piano is not my specialty. Trumpet is my specialty. Let me know if St. Mary's ever has the need of my services. Well, I took that email and forwarded it to Joanne, and Marcus and Joanne made that connection such that, long story short, Marcus Rabb was here on Christmas Eve regaling us with his beautiful trumpet talents along with our Christmas carols and filling up our worship space with his gorgeous musical instrument talents. And he'll be here on Easter Sunday, once again regaling us with his talents on brass. So, you know, it's a slice of life story. You know, it's not a lightning bolt moment, but it started with just an impulse to be positive, an impulse to pass on a compliment, and a compliment turned into a connection, and a connection turned into a relationship, and a relationship turned into Marcus and Joanne playing together and spreading that love and joy to a wider community and filling up this place with worship. And so it is that when we follow the shepherd, when we follow where God's lead, goodness and mercy and the blessings of life will somehow, some way, make their way around to bless us in return. We follow, and goodness and mercy follows us. You know, Jesus loved this psalm. Jesus loved the Psalm 23. And he loved it so much that he wrote himself into it. The people hearing Jesus talk would have certainly known this psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, and they may have been surprised when Jesus said in the Gospel of John, I am the good shepherd. Jesus wrote himself into this psalm. He said, I know my sheep and my sheep know me. So it is that if you're looking for a way to follow God, Jesus said, follow me. I am the disclosure of God. Follow my teachings. Follow my example. Look to me and you will be able to follow God. Why follow Jesus? That's all he really said, by the way. Follow me. There's a writer named Don Everts who put it this way. Jesus never asked anyone to become a Christian. He never built a church, never drew up a theological book, never took an offering, never wore religious garments, never incorporated for tax purposes. He simply called people to follow him. I am the good shepherd. Follow me. 
as our Lord. Does he have the credentials for us to follow him? Is he a worthy shepherd? A shepherd is only as good as whether or not he can keep the sheep safe. Jesus adds something to the list of credentials for the good shepherd. He says not only does the shepherd provide for the flock, but a shepherd lays down his life for the flock. He says that in the gospel according to John. Friends, this is the last Sunday before Palm Sunday. The last Sunday before we make our way to Jerusalem, before we make our way to the upstairs room and to Golgotha on Good Friday, where Jesus will once and for all display his credentials as the shepherd, credentials that are written in the holes of his hands and his feet and his side. He says, not only do I lead, not only do I call you by name, not only do I provide for you, but I lay down my life for you. If we had any doubt of his worthiness as our shepherd, the doubts are erased as we look to the cross in these coming weeks. One more thought about this psalm. It comes in verse 5 where it says, My cup is running over. My cup runneth over. What's that about? Well, it's a symbol of abundance, right? You imagine a cup on a table and you're pouring wine or pouring oil such that it overflows. Well, there's a clue here for the Christian life. Is that when all of this following is going well for our lives, when we are following the shepherd, where goodness and mercy are following us, it's going to run over and affect the people around us. When God's love is poured into us, It overflows, and we're able to overflow that love to people around us. We're not just lone rangers in this. Our cup runs over. It's that old song. They will know we are Christians by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. It's a good line because it involves us loving others, but it also involves people knowing that we're Christians, which is maybe even better. So let your cup runneth over. Sometimes preachers get into this thing of figuring out a way to end a sermon. I suppose today we can help each other out. We've already read this psalm once. Let's read it again, all together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. 